My name is Kamini Singha, and I'm a professor at the Colorado School of Mines. I primarily study hydrogeology and its interface with geophysical tools. There are a myriad of geophysical instruments that we use in hydrogeology. Many of the common ones, especially in the last 20 years or so, have been electrical and electromagnetic methods. Um, seismic is a fairly underutilized method, I think, that is becoming more popular in recent time, and certainly a bit of gravity as well nuclear magnetic resonance. There's a number of tools that are coming to the forefront that are useful for us in terms of trying to understand what's happening in the subsurface. As hydrogeologists, we tend to be very data limited where we are dealing with borehole data or in the shallow subsurface, soil pits um, or point scale uh, probes that allow us to say something about processes that we might be interested in. So geophysics provides a, a much bigger scale picture in terms of the spatial scale of some of the systems that we might be interested in thinking about. Uh, I was asked today to talk specifically about hydrogeophysics with its applications to Beto zone processes. And to me, the most obvious thing to think about in the unsaturated zone is the fact that when we introduce water, that is a huge geophysical signature um, change in most of the methods that we think about. So um, that idea of getting water into the ground, that delivery of water, is important for a whole bunch of processes that we think about in terms of their ecosystem services from crop production to water supply to water quality, soil retention, climate and flood regulation, a whole bunch of things. Uh, what's happening in that, that shallow piece of the earth is incredibly important. And where geophysics can help contribute is in our estimation of both the stores and the fluxes of water from land surface down into the ground. But maybe most importantly, we can say something about dimensionality in a way that's usually pretty hard with the data that we have. Some of the issues with geophysical data include uh, the fact that we're sensitive to a whole variety of properties. So the properties that we measure geophysically include things like the seismic velocity or the electrical conductivity or the dielectric permittivity of the subsurface. And all of these things aren't the properties that hydrogeologists care that much about um, when they might be interested in permeability or moisture content or sulfate concentration. So one issue is trying to find the right relations between the geophysical properties we measure and the hydrologic properties of interest. And, um, and that is no small uh, feat for us to think about. Um, another issue is that we have uh, spatially variable resolution uh, in the measurements that we make. So as an example, if we think about um, electrical resistivity, we have a series of electrodes that we put on the ground and we drive current between one pair of those electrodes and measure potentials at some other pair. And in that particular case, what happens is that most of the current travels in the very shallow subsurface. You know, maybe 90% of it goes at the spacing of the current electrodes, depending entirely on the electrical conductivity of the ground. But maybe we don't see very deeply. And so what that means is we resolve what's in the near surface really well, whereas as we get deeper, we see things less well. Conversely, wave-based methods, the resolution is a function of how many independent rays or waves are moving through the, su the subsurface. So we tend to do better in different parts of the Earth. What that means is that when we are trying to convert maps of some geophysical property into some hydrogeologic property, those relationships are really complex. That's coupled with the fact that we've got these rock physics issues and that, for instance, conductivity is sensitive to things like changes in the salinity or changes in moisture content or changes in temperature imprinted on the fact that we're looking at differences in lithology. So parsing all of that out is a really complex piece uh, for people that are working in hydrogeophysical systems. Another um, big picture issue that we have to think about um, with these things is how to invert data in a way that gets us to the properties that we really care about. So rather than making maps of geophysical properties, can we get directly to maps that might be of a property that are of interest to the hydrogeologists we're thinking about? One way that we have looked at getting past many of these issues is by collecting time-lapse data. So in making the same measurements over and over and over again through time, we can minimize some of the impacts from uh, changes that we're not interested in. So as an example, with water infiltrating into the Vados zone, 
um, we might be able to minimize some of the changes from lithology by taking multiple snapshots in time of these geophysical measurements. And so that's one opportunity for us to be able to parse these data sets. But many of these things in terms of how to use these data quantitatively um, remain open questions for the next generation of hydrogeophysicists certainly to think about.